got to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can't stand still. No, you have given me purpose. Oh, my, all my heart is yours. to serve you. serve you you have given me a job to do i wanna love the world just like you yeah you have given me purpose oh my oh my heart is yours Is Straight Street. Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of someone who faces a ginormous fear. I give up. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about faith, which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Well, I can't see anything in this box. Nope. Despite the burning question, what's in the box? Kids have written in with stuff to put inside the box. Okay, so we put stuff in the box and then stare at it? No, we take turns putting something inside, then the other person has to guess by feeling what's inside. With no idea what we're about to touch, that makes my skin crawl. Ugh. Come on, it'll be fun. Then you go first. All right, close your eyes and turn around. I'll be right back. Ready? Yep. You ready? Mm-hmm. Can we get some happy music? Hey! Picky picky. Okay. It's cold. What do you think it what, what do you think it is? I don't know. Hold guess? on. Hold on. Wait. It, it feels kind of stringy. It kind of feels like pasta. Well, what do you think it is? Is it pasta? Ding ding ding. It's a pasta brain. Hey, look at that. And now it's your turn. Oh no. Turn around and close your eyes. Mm, I don't like this. This is going to be fun. I don't like this. Okay, good? you're good. Come on down. Okay. 
Just, you, you have to move like all of them. Uh, I'm serious. Oh, that's, it's, it's wet. <laughs> just move around. I don't go, know. Go to it's the top. Go to it's the top. Ah, I hate this. I hate this so much. You're okay, you're okay. Take a look. Oh. It's a jackfruit. They actually taste kind of sweet. Oh, I still think it belongs in my aquarium. Who gets the last box? Um, rock, paper, scissors? Okay. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Yes! Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, you ready? Okay. Before I put my hands in, I'm gonna feel outside. Why would you feel outside? To see if there's movement. I don't know. No, just put your hands in. I'll, I'll give you a countdown. All right, you ready? No, no, hold okay. on. Okay. Three, two, one. Mm -mm. Yes. Okay. Just feel around. Oh, it's not even there. Feel at the very bottom, feel the top, like. Not in the air. I felt something, okay. I can't make any rash movements. I know this, I have a feeling this is alive. I don't know why I feel like it's alive, but I feel like it's alive. Okay. I'm going. Oh, I think it's something cute. I think it's something cute. Hold on, wait. I feel like it's either like a chick or like a bunny. I can't, I can't decide what it is. <laughs> okay, take a guess. Okay, I, I, I think it's a bunny. Is that your final guess? That's my final guess. All right, <laughs> look over. Okay. <gasps> I'm gonna get replays of that in my dreams. <laughs> Speaking of scary visions, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells us the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So, at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly, with the help of God's Spirit. But a man named Saul was determined to get rid of new believers. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Saul, also called Paul, was absolutely certain that God wanted him to stamp out the new church. In fact, Saul got special permission from the high priest to travel 150 miles to Damascus to arrest the Jesus followers there. But as Saul approached Damascus, a light from heaven blazed around him and the voice of Jesus spoke telling Saul to go into the city and wait. In an instant, Saul's world turned upside down. When Saul stood up, he discovered he was blind. His fellow travelers led him into Damascus to the home of a man named Judas. For three days, Saul prayed and didn't eat or drink anything. Meanwhile, word that Saul was coming to arrest Jesus' followers had spread throughout the town. The new believers, including a man named Ananias, were filled with fear, unsure what would happen to them. As Ananias paced the floor waiting for news, the Lord called out to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord? Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision, Saul has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. Whoa, slow down! What? Saul had come to Damascus to arrest believers and maybe even sentence them to die. Saul was the enemy, the bad guy. And yet, God was asking Ananias to go and find him and help him? You can bet Ananias was looking for a way out. Lord. I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem. 
Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. The chief priests have given him authority to do this. Go. I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for me. Whoa! Only God could create such an amazing plan to take the greatest enemy of Jesus and turn him into the most loyal follower. Whatever Ananias thought or felt about it, he chose to trust God with his fears. Ananias went directly to Straight Street and the home of Judas. Sure enough, Ananias found Saul in prayer, unable to see anything. Who's there? Ananias had one last chance to turn and run, but he remembered that God's spirit was there to help him. So Ananias placed his hands on Saul's shoulders. Brother Saul, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right away, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. I can see. I bet Ananias was equally excited and terrified. God had just done an incredible miracle, but there was no telling what Saul would do now. I want to be baptized. What? Please, baptize me now, in Jesus' name. Right then and there, Saul was baptized. After eating some food, he joined the other Jesus followers in Damascus and even started preaching in the synagogues. Jesus is God's son. He's the one God has sent to save us all. Everyone who heard Saul preach was shocked. Isn't this the man who caused so much trouble for the Jesus followers in Jerusalem? I thought he came here to take prisoners. Saul continued to speak about Jesus with power and authority. He quickly gained loyal friends among the Jesus followers. But other Jewish people were so upset, they made plans to get rid of him. Brother Saul, they are planning to kill you. Saul wouldn't let even fear of death stop him. I won't quit. I have to keep teaching about Jesus. You can go to Jerusalem and join the believers there. All right. I'll leave tonight. They're watching all the city gates. We have to get you out another way. Saul's friends smuggled him out of the city by lowering him through a window in a giant basket. When Saul was safely out of Damascus, he made the long trip back to Jerusalem, where he had arrested so many Jesus followers. You can imagine what happened when he tried to join the believers there. Yeah, they were terrified, but a man named Barnabas had heard about Saul's meetings with Jesus. He believed that Saul had truly changed. So he took Saul to meet with the leaders of the new church. Jesus spoke to Saul. I believe it. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus and preached in Jesus' name. All right, we believe you. I never thought I'd say this, but welcome, Saul. Saul preached fearlessly about Jesus all over Jerusalem. And once again, some Jewish people made plans to get rid of him. Saul's friends helped him escape the city and travel to his hometown of Tarsus. There, Saul spent time growing closer to Jesus. And meanwhile, the new church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and continued to grow with the help of God's Holy Spirit. The end. Wow, Saul joining the believers? It's like, like... Like if Thanos tried to join the Avengers. It must have taken Ananias so much trust to go to Saul, but God gave him the power to do it. The believers in Jerusalem too. I mean, God helped them face their fear of Saul. That's right. The new believers were learning that they could rely on God's spirit for help in any difficult situation. So what's our part in the story? Well, just like the believers in the new church, we have fears to face, and those fears can take all kinds of shapes. Maybe it's figuring out how to talk to a kid in your class who's been saying mean things about you. Or you're nervous about telling your coach that you have to miss a really big practice. Or you're nervous about a really big test. <laughs> yeah, 
No matter how big or small your fear may seem, you can ask God for help. God may not change the situation, but you can have faith that God will give you the power to face it head on. And God will be with you every step of the way. I think y'all have got it. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> so here's the thing. God can help you face your fears. Uh, what are you doing? Just practicing. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. She's actually pretty cute.